Here is a 1991 Techniques SLPG400A CD player. This is rather sad. Lots of scratches. The play button is loose, but it should still work. If I turn it on, you can see the vacuum fluorescent display is very dim, very worn out. It actually looks better on camera than it does in real life. And there is a rather fundamental problem. The CD player won't play. And I'm not surprised. I have had several SLPG series CD players in the past, and none of them worked. As you can see, the CD player does still have the Philips CDM4 swing arm mechanism. And if I put in this stamped CD, it should have no problems playing this one. But as you may or may not be able to hear, it just keeps spinning up the disc and never succeeds reading it. It's just stuck in an endless loop. Here is the inside of the CD player. It does have a separate headphone amplifier. Main board connects to the front circuit board via a dead moth. Power transformer in the back. Here is the Philips CDM4 mechanism that Techniques built under license. And somebody has been in here before and they put in this rubber belt right there. Now, I have checked on another Techniques CD player with CDM4 mechanism that I have. Yes, it does look like something was supposed to be here, but there isn't. And if we flip up the disc retaining bracket, there is the laser assembly. And this is where I'm going to start. Maybe I'm going to be lucky and it's just a dirty lens, but I don't think so. Anyway, I have some alcohol-based window cleaner on this cotton swab. Let's clean this lens really well. And as I have found, it is very important to dry it off with the dry side of the cotton swab afterwards. And of course, be careful, don't put too much pressure onto the lens. And that should be it. Let's test it again. No, just as I expected, it still doesn't work. So far, this has always been the point at which I've given up, but this time I'd like to try something new. Under the mechanism is the servo board, and on the servo board are these two adjustments for focus and laser beam current. And I'm going to try to adjust these. Increasing the laser beam current should increase the light output of the laser diode, and maybe it will then read CDs again. So, here we go. I'm going to put in a CDR, because if I'm going to change the adjustments, I want to change them so that the CD player will also play CDRs, because a CD player that doesn't play CDRs is useless to me. So, it's now trying to read, and I have this hex key in the laser beam current adjustment. So, let's see what happens if we change that adjustment. Okay, that's that's the limit. 
and the CD player doesn't... Oh dear! Okay, I think that was the wrong direction. We reduced it to a point at which the whole thing wasn't happy anymore. Let's go into the other direction. Hmm. Okay, now this is this is getting kind of dangerous because <laughs> there is the there is the fuse. I'm gonna get a shock if I touch that. Ooh. It's doing weird things again. Let's see, let's change this position of this hex key. Doing it again. Okay, we're getting close to the maximum. Okay, the symptom has changed once again. Okay, well, that is not working. Let's go back and put in a stamped CD. Maybe this CD player totally won't read CDRs. And let's... Okay, it doesn't seem to be happy at that point. Ooh. Hmm. Let's go all the way back to the other end of the adjustment. Nope, there we are, that's the end. Ugh, making ugly noises again. That is not working so well. Let's, uh, while we're here, let's, uh, yeah. That was turning the focus adjustment. That didn't do anything either. Hmm. I kept trying to adjust the laser beam current and focus adjustments off camera. I tried different combinations of the two, and eventually I even found that there are some convenient holes in the bottom of the CD player so that you can get to the adjustments with your hex key more easily and without risking to touch that mains fuse. But unfortunately, no success. As you have seen, if the beam current is too low, the CD player won't even attempt to read the CD, and if the beam current is too high, there will be all kinds of strange behavior and the CD player will forcefully slam the laser assembly into its end stop. So finally, I try to follow the instructions given in the service manual. Laser beam current adjustment instructions in the service manual. Pause if you want to read. This is what it should be. And this is what I get. And I have tried to adjust this to negative 50 millivolts. Focus adjustment instructions in the service manual. This is badly drawn. They tell you to set the scope to 200 millivolts per division, so this sine wave should be centered around this line up here. And this is what I get. I had to change the time base to get at least some sort of a usable reading. 
This cursor is set to 400 millivolts. As you can see, the oscillation is pretty well centered around that. Unfortunately, no success. The CD player does not work. So, unfortunately, this is the end. I'm now going to salvage all interesting components from this device, and then it will go back to where it came from, the trash. Before and while taking apart the CD player, I have checked various power supply voltages, capacitors, solder joints. The only bad solder joint that I could find was the ground connection of the audio output jacks. The fault must have indeed been the laser. I could not find anything else wrong in this CD player. Also, earlier in the video, I said that the mechanism was made by techniques under license from Philips. But looking at this a bit closer, I'm not so sure anymore. See, we have this sticker right there. And then if we turn the whole thing upside down, you would expect to find Philips made ICs in here. But also the silk screen very distinctly looks like Philips. It certainly looks nothing like the silk screen on the main board, as you can see. Another interesting thing is the logo for the MASH multi-stage noise shaping. This is what Techniques calls their digital to analog converter. You can see this is this sort of classy looking font. Well, looking at this main board, it looks like Techniques originally intended the MASH logo to look a bit different from that more of a late 1980s high-tech font. Not every repair can be a success. I hope you still found this interesting. I hope you still learned something from this video. Thank you for watching.